Hi there, and thank you for tuning in. In this video, I will be talking about exposure and ISO sensitivity, as shown here in the table of contents from the manual. I will not be talking about flash photography. I think that's a big subject on its own, so I will only be talking about exposure for available light. If you want to dive into either manual mode or bracketing in more details, I have separate videos about that. You can see they're here marked with the red circles. And that's part of the playlist that I have related to the Nikon D700. But let's get started. When you're working in fully automated mode, there are two things that constantly work. One is that your Nikon D700 has a meter that keeps metering the available light, sort of built into the camera. And that meter feeds that information it reads about how much light there is into the camera. And the camera, based on that, calculates the correct aperture and shutter speed when you are in fully automated mode. Doing so, you can take more or less control, and that's actually the whole point with having several ex exposure modes. The first one is manual mode, where you determine both aperture and shutter. The second one here is program mode, where the camera decides everything. The third one is shutter priority, as the name says, you decide the shutter. And the last one is the other way around, that's where you determine the aperture. All the modes, the reason for having four modes is all about how much control do you want to take. Going from almost no control in program mode, there's a little twist there called flexible program mode, but otherwise having very little influence on what the camera does to taking full control where you set everything and also actually run the risk that the exposure gets wrong. The shutter priority or aperture priority is also known as the semi-automatic modes because it determines you know, the value you have left with the camera based on, on the calculation it does, whereas the program mode is called the fully automatic mode and manual mode obviously is manual. Many think about the exposure triangle. You have aperture, you have shutter speed, and you have ISO. But I think if you look at how uh, Nikon has structured their manual, you will see that ISO sensitivity is a subject of its own. And then you have the exposure. And I often get the question, can I set ISO sensitivity independent of the exposure mode? And the answer to that is yes. So you can actually be in manual mode and set the auto ISO on so that the camera determines the, the auto ISO. That's a variant, I think, of the semi-automatic modes. Uh, but the point is that these two things are set up completely independent of each other. If you look at actually what happens, then as you press the shutter speed here to the left, the exposure uh, starts of the shutter. The shutter is open and the aperture and the shutter speed determines how much exposure the sensor gets to the light. Then the shutter obviously closes and then starts the camera approached processing. And in that process, you can configure many things that would influence how the camera works. But ISO is one of them. It sort of is a factor that is applied to what is being read on the sensor. And then when that is applied, the picture is done. Many think that the sensor you can influence the sensitivity of the sensor with iso but i don't think that's the case i think the sensor has the sensitivity it had when it left the factory what you do is you apply a certain factor to the sensor readings and that's also why you will see that high iso numbers often gives a lot of noise because you apply the factor both to the signal and to the noise and when you have a relatively weak signal which is the case when you apply higher iso numbers then you actually have a very little difference between the signal and the noise and therefore the ISO factor will, will also multiply the noise and you get you get grainy or noisy pictures. That's why I think Nikon here, when it comes to ISO sensitivity and exposure, distinguish very sharply between these two. But let's start out with the metering of the available light, how it's done and how you can influence the way it works. So you can control the way your meter works in the camera using the dial right next to your viewfinder. And it has three modes, and you can see those small graphics up here in the top. To the rightmost, you have the center weighted, then you have the so-called 3D matrix. You just simply turn the dial like this to select that one. And then again, to the left, you have the spot metering. So the first mode looks at the entire scene here and uh, tries to figure out what a good exposure is. So if there's something that's very bright or something that's very dark, it finds a good balance. And that's why it's called this very advanced name, 3D Color Matrix Mark II. I think we 
engineers lost the debate with the marketing people when they had to figure out the name for this mode but as it tries to indicate that it it sort of is a it's a good average of of different factors it tries to take into the entire scene the second one here is the center weighted and what that means is it, it still looks in the entire scene but it puts more emphasis on the center so for instance if you're taking a portrait this this mode could be a good one for for that purpose and finally we have the spot mode where it only uses the center of the scene or where you have put the, the focus point in the manual says it's only 1.5 percent of the entire frame here that is used for metering so it's very very specific to that point and also be aware it will not work with all lenses you need to have i think cpu contacts in order for this to work otherwise it will not use uh, where you have put the the focus point we just use the center so this i think is a very specialized one in in terms of metering you can also lock the metering by pushing the button here as i'm showing you here right now i have a hand holding across the lens meaning that it reads almost no light so if i just take a reading here see it says 15 in shutter speed and f4 as the aperture if i then open up you will see there are no changes right the value stays the same even though i let in more light but as soon as i let go of the button here and then start flapping my hand again you will see the the metering changes right and that's useful if you want to do a recomposition you can use this metering button to lock the values red until you hit the shutter. So thank you for staying with me this far. Now we get to the interesting part, setting the aperture and the shutter speed. Selecting the exposure mode on your Nikon D700 is about pushing the mode button while turning the rear command dial. There are four modes to select from. You can see right now I am in mode S, as in shutter priority. You also have aperture priority, manual mode, and program mode. Not all these modes work together with all kinds of lenses in manual mode i think that will work with most lenses but in some of the uh, semi-automatic and automatic modes you need to be able to control the aperture from the camera otherwise it's difficult for the camera to sort of set uh, the aperture obviously so you can see right now in program mode it is flashing and that's an indication that together with the ai lens that i have mounted right now this mode will not work so with an ai lens i can only use aperture priority and manual mode. If you want the details, you can dive into the manual. Uh, I don't want to go into all those details here because I want to keep this video relatively short, but just be aware that if you see a flashing a symbol there, that's an indication that that mode does not work with the lens you have mounted. So program mode comes with a little twist in the sense that you can control the way the camera prioritizes aperture. So if you look at here, it says at 125th of a second, f5.6. If I tweak the rear command dial to the left, you will see a little asterisk appears next to the P. And now it has gone up in f-stop, meaning it has sort of closed the aperture. And that is actually the prioritization that will do if you tweak the program mode here to the left, it will prioritize to close the aperture. So now I've gone back to the center position. I can see it, the values came back here. If I go the other way, now you'll see it tries to open up the aperture and adjust the uh, shutter speed accordingly to get the correctly exposed picture. And again, it's the same asterisk that appears. And that is perhaps a little bit confusing. You can't tell the difference between whether you've gone left or you've gone right. But just remember that left prioritizes to sort of close down the aperture where possible. Going right opens it up. So this is a way to still rely on the automated mode, but giving the camera a hint as to what it should prioritize. The button for exposure compensation sits to the right here, just behind your shutter. And if you push that one, you can use the rear command dial to change the exposure compensation. And once you have set a value different from zero and you let go again of the button, you will see that there's a little symbol here that gives an indication that the exposure compensation is on. As you can see here on the metering scale, camera is a in a semi-automatic mode, and then it has selected the right exposure for that, and then it has subtracted one stop because I asked it to 
go one stop below what it would otherwise sort of have calculated or have recommended as the correct exposure. So in this way, you can actually, without going out of the semi-automatic or automatic mode, you can control the exposure in such a way that uh, you see fit without giving up the comfort of the semi-automatic or automatic modes. If you want to do really long exposures, other than uh, more than 30 seconds, then you need to go to manual mode. You can see right now I am at one tenth of a second. And if I turn the rear command dial, I can go to longer and longer exposures. And you can see here, I become now more and more overexposed. You typically want to do this if you want to shoot uh, with an ND filter, uh, say long exposures where you want the water to look silky smooth. And uh, this is a way to do it. So you can you can go up to 30 seconds maximum. If you want to go beyond that, you need to go into bulb mode. And this sits right next to uh, the 30 seconds. So if you go one step further, then you have bulb mode. And you probably need to do this with a remote shutter. But what happens is, as long as you keep the shutter down, the curtain is open. So you can hear, if I press it, as long as I press the shutter, then it's open and it's taking now taking in light. And as soon as I let go, it closes again, right? So this is the way to do 30 plus exposures. And uh, I think only you need this for situations where, you, as I said, as you're shooting with an ND filter. If you want to set the ISO manually, there is a button to the left here you can push. And then you can see here right now it's at the base ISO 200 and you can change that using the rare command dial, change the values up and down. There also are some low and some high modes, uh, but I don't want to cover that. I, I seldom use those and uh, I seldom actually go above a thousand uh, in, in ISO if I, can, if I can avoid it. So the cleanest pictures you will get if you set your ISO at uh, 200, but of course sometimes you need to go high uh, if you, there's lack of light. If you don't want to take care of ISO, then you need to go into the menu system and set up auto ISO. Unfortunately, you can't do that via buttons and dials on the camera. You have to go into the menu system. So you press the menu button here top left on the back side of the camera, and it starts out in, in the playback menu, and you need to go one down to the shooting menu and then push the arrow to the right and then it will go into uh, the shooting menu system here. If we go to the top of that one you can see there's a scroll bar here to the right and if you just go one, two, three pages down you come to the ISO sensitivity settings right and uh, you can also if you want to you can just uh, go Instead of going to three screens down, you can just go one up and it will take you exactly the same place if the number four from the bottom here. If you go in and look at the ISO sensitivity settings, you can see right now auto control is off, but I can say I want to switch that on. I just select using the center of the command dial here and you can also set how high do you want it to go and what is your minimum shot of speed. So that will help uh, controlling the ISO values there so they don't go crazy. Uh, if you don't like that, you can go in here and set that to, you know, whatever is to your preference. Maybe you should actually lower that because I think that I don't want to go crazy high. There also is an option to add the ISO sensitivity control to my menu. So if you're using that one, maybe that could be a good idea. That will save you a little bit of time. But I actually prefer the D750's way of doing it, where you select all control on and off using the front command dial. But unfortunately not here on the, on the D700. You have to go into the menu system. Thank you for staying with me this far. I hope you haven't fallen asleep yet. Uh, we have now covered all the subjects with the green check mark. And if you want to take a deeper dive, as I mentioned in the beginning, of manual mode or bracketing, please visit my playlist related to the Nikon D700. Otherwise, as always, happy shooting. Take care. Bye bye.